Welcome to Star Citizen and the ship guide to the solo salvage ship, the Drake Interplanetary Vulture. In this detailed guide, you will learn everything about this beginner salvage ship, from the exterior, the interior, the equipment as well as the expansion levels of the salvage mechanics, and of course, which game areas you can use with a Drake Vulture. And of course, we have summarized all the details on salvaging itself, the salvaging mechanics in our salvaging guide. Here you can find out everything about how to remove the hull from scrap parts or stranded shipwrecks, how to generate saleable material and of course how to turn your cargo into money. And if the video has informed you well and you think you'd like to see more videos, I'd love a channel subscription and your opinion as a comment. Thank you! The Drake Interplanetary Vulture is the first salvaging ship for solo pilots in Star Citizen. As a light salvage ship, the Vulture offers an interesting set of features in the industrial play area. The dimensions of 34 meters in length, 60 meters in width and 9 meters in height accommodate the core area of the ship with cockpit, accommodation as well as raw material processing and cargo space, as well as the outriggers with the salvage technology. In other words, everything you need for longer salvage trips. The Vulture is classified as size 2, allowing the use of small landing pads or hangars. The component equipment is completely industrial in size 1, so small. As a recommendation for recovery engineers, the quantum engine should be replaced with a military counterpart as soon as possible to reduce spool and flight times and to be able to escape quickly in case of danger. With 12 SCU cargo capacity on the secured cargo grid, the Vulture offers ample room for salvaging trips, with an additional 10 to 12 SCU optionally squeezed into the cargo hold as unsecured cargo. For safety reasons, however, we recommend that you do not overdo it with additional loose cargo, otherwise you risk your entire ship, including cargo. The equipment of the Vulture is basically designed for a solo pilot with a lounge and kitchen area, but it makes sense to temporarily take a second player with you into the verse. With a crewman you can greatly increase your yield and mining speed, but the profit is reduced accordingly. However, there is no separate seat for a passenger, so the only alternative is the bed. The Vulture is available in the official pledge store for about $175 only during special sales events. In the game, the Vulture will be purchasable with version 3.19 for in-game currency. An in-game price is not yet known, but it is likely to be based on the MISC Prospector as a solo mining ship and will be around 2 million Alpha USC. As a special feature, the Vulture has two accesses to the ship. One via the extendable ramp and alternatively as a quick way into the cockpit via the side ladder. Thanks to the dedicated VTOL thrusters, salvage operations can also be carried out stably in atmospheric conditions. All through, the apparently rotatable main thrusters cannot yet be varied. The Vulture offers a variety of salvage options, such as laser stripping from hull material, separation of larger pieces, crushing of material and more. However, with the current expansion stage, the salvage mechanics are limited to the removal of material using lasers in general. With further upgrades of salvaging, however, the existing options such as the dedicated tractor beams, the shredding option for material, as well as component recycling, will also be unlocked for the Drake Vulture. The Vulture therefore offers all the major salvaging techniques, which will appear for the mechanics. The two size 2 Baylor salvage lasers each have access to two selectable size 1 scraper modules. We recommend the standard upgrade module or the optional trawler module for all applications. And by the way, you can get a regularly updated overview of all modules, equipment and resources in our Discord as a free PDF download. The armament of the Vulture with two size 1 hardpoints is very limited. We recommend two size 1 laser cannons to achieve a minimum of firepower, so that the Vulture has sufficient power against smaller targets. It is also advisable to use a gimbal for size 1 hardpoints and only for size 1 hardpoints. 
as this gives you target assistance and you do not lose any firepower. In the interior of the Drake Interplanetary Vulture, we find a retractable ramp, whereby besides small bikes such as a Nox, Dragonfly or a Hover Quad, there is also room for a Greycat STV or the buggy in the cargo hold. Regularly, 12 SEU of cargo capacity are possible at the cargo grid. In addition, in the cargo hold we find the resource processing with output hatch for processed salvage material and standardized SEU cargo boxes. And in addition, the crafting of a multi-tool and industrial attachments is temporarily possible via the station. However, this option will be removed with upcoming dedicated crafting options. Furthermore, some components in the cargo hold are accessible, such as the two size 1 shield generators. Via the ladder, which is located behind the door at the end of the cargo hold, we reach the upper deck, where there is a small antechamber with a locker for spacesuits as well as a weapons compartment. Here we also have access to the Vulture's quantum drive. The launch area, secured by another door, provides access to further components, a small kitchen, a separate sanitary area, as well as the bed, which allows logging in and out of the ship. The Drake interior design is, as usual, very functional and does not offer any comfort features. Here, functionality clearly comes first. The cockpit, which is fully glazed on three sides, offers excellent visibility and is equipped with a swiveling pilot seat as well as a glass door to the left boom. This allows additional access even into weightlessness, provided the spacesuit is worn. The four MFDs, divided in two levels, as well as the functional cockpit elements, enable an effective salvage of scrap and captured material. The possible uses of this solo salvage ship are clearly in the industrial sector. All through, thanks to the cargo hold, parcel and smaller cargo missions can also be carried out without any problems. A combination of salvage and missions is a good idea here anyway. But let's go to the core area of the Vulture, the salvage gameplay. Of course, we have already prepared a comprehensive XXL salvaging guide for you here in the channel, in which you will find all the details on salvaging. Nevertheless, we will of course go into all the important areas again in detail for the Drake Vulture. Especially in asteroid fields, at Lagrange points or in combat areas, you can quickly find usable material. You find these materials by using your ship scanner, which is activated by default with the V key and can be followed by a scanner pulse with a tap key. If you now approach the scanner hits further, you will recognize suitable resources by the salvaging symbol, which is more reminiscent of a beer's paw. These can be NPC shipwrecks in various grades, lose larger wreckage or even shut down NPCs or player wrecks. If you now approach your target by about 100 meter and activate the salvage mode with the M key, you can start. Optionally, you can now switch through the two installed standard modules with a click on the right mouse button, whereby we generally recommend the second module, the Abrade. And with a click on the left mouse button, you finally start the salvage process, whereby you aim at existing hull sections and slowly pull them off. By pressing the G key, you can change the control options of the lasers from a rigging forward alignment to a free alignment. In the center of the HUD, you can see the current cargo capacity, whereby a cargo box is automatically generated in your cargo hold in the case of an SCU. And the modules used on the size and the speed of the material transfer in the center, which can be varied by the distance to the target, the module used and the target itself. You don't have to worry about the ejection of the first generated cargo box yet, but we have to remove it before we can generate the second one. More about that in a moment. The salvage modules that can be used differ in three factors. The mining radius of the laser, the transfer speed of material and the efficiency of the transfer. What you lose along the way. We therefore recommend the standard upgrade module or the optionally available trawler module as these have a significantly extended degradation radius and this significantly increase the recovery speed without having too high losses. The Chinch module, on the other hand, is ideal in exceptional cases for detailed work or very small recovery targets where a very high material density prevails. But we come to another important option for optimizing the alignment and superimposition of your salvage lasers, thus increasing your yield and speed. 
With the key combination Alt or Control key, a click on the right mouse button and the mouse wheel, you can position your salvage lasers horizontally and vertically, which, depending on the distance and modules used, enables a significantly better material yield in a shorter time and can significantly increase your salvage speed. You can also switch the laser alignment from horizontal to vertical at any time, even during operation, by clicking on the Alt or Control key and the right mouse button. But let's get back to the output area of your generated resources. As soon as the first resource box has been generated, it is stuck in the output bay, which, however, blocks the generation of a second box for the time being. And this is where a second player with a multi-tool and tractor beam attachment comes into play, keeping the output bay free and stacking the crates on the cargo grid in your hold. Or you can get out of the pilot seat yourself, interrupt the salvage work – you are of course defenseless during this time – and go into the cargo hold yourself to take over this job. A total of 12 cargo units are available in the cargo hold which can be anchored to the cargo grid, so you can securely store boxes without them falling over due to flight maneuvers. Optionally, the cargo hold offers about twice the capacity to simply stack boxes loosely into it, but this is done at your own risk as it is associated with risks. In addition, the Vulture, like the Reclaimer, temporarily offers the possibility of crafting multi-tools and industrial attachments directly at the output station using to collect its salvage material. All through, this will be removed with the implementation of the crafting mechanics and dedicated crafting ships and stations. And so we come to the summary and the conclusion of the Drake Interplanetary Vulture. The Drake Vulture is the gold standard for any salvage technician who prefers to go it alone or alternatively bring a friend. The earning and salvage options are promising and have great potential in the future with more salvage mechanics. The price of $175 in the Pledge Store is reasonable, but we generally recommend an in-game purchase, which will be possible from Alpha 3.19 onwards.